Hami Takiapi, Dakota Ia Utu Chistina Amakiapie, Washi Chuya Teresa Peterson Amakiapie, Pijuta Zizi Kapi Hamataha. Hello, my relatives. In Dakota, they call me Little Oak, and in English, Teresa. I come from the place where they dig the yellow medicine, commonly referred to as the Upper Sioux community. I wish we could be together in person, but I'm so happy you're reading Grasshopper Girl. Grasshopper Girl, or Psi Chadawi Chiana, is my mother's Dakota name. Both my mother and uncle shared the Ukdomi story with me. Stories transmit traditions and values from one generation to the next. What tradition and values do you think are revealed in Grasshopper Girl? Stories can teach us how to live and behave. Both Grasshopper Girl and Ukdomi provide teachings on how to live and behave. What do you think they are? Stories tell us about place. This land we call home and walk upon is full of story. Do you recognize some of the Dakota words in the book that are the same as towns in our state? See if you can identify them. Remember, Minnesota, our home state, is a Dakota word. Stories can teach us to be strong and resilient. Just knowing that this story has been passed down for many generations tell me the Dakota people have been here for a very long time and we are still here. Try writing your own story. Stories can lift up a hero, especially one we won't find in a history book. Stories can reconcile and make things right. Stories entertain, they make us laugh and cry and every emotion in between. Finally, stories provide belonging because they offer connections and nurture our humanity. I had a lot of fun writing Grasshopper Girl story because I have found stories have a way of uniting and bringing people together. With all our differences and commonalities, we all have story. Share story. Seep sees Ina pull the thermometer out of her mouth. Hmm, 99.5. Not much of a temp. Still, it is better to be safe than sorry. Seep see was running a slight fever and her legs were aching again. Ina sent her to bed. Seep see Chadawi Chiana gathered the patchwork quilt and rubbed the worn ends between her fingers. She wished her Ate were with her just then to share a story. Seep Seep lived in a full house with only two bedrooms and seven people. Seep Seep's Ate made her feel special. Even with achy legs, Seep Seep Chidawi Chiana wanted to stay awake until he returned. Seep Seep Chidawi Chiana was born in 1943 and was the fourth of five children. Their small but sturdy house on the Dakota Reservation was always busy with people coming and going. Her two older brothers were always on the go. The oldest brother teased Seep C a lot. Her older sister left Seep C to play by herself, even though she was only two years older. She said Seep C was still a baby and not old enough to play with her friends. Seep C Chidawi Chiana had just turned six years old. She wished for fall to come so she could go to school too. Ate had promised her that it would soon be her time to ride the big yellow bus and make new friends. Seep Seep thought about making a new friend. A smile spread across her face. She could show her new friend the dress that Ina had made for her doll for her birthday. After that, she would take her down to the creek and they could look for turtles. And when it warmed up, they could go swimming. And Seep C spent so much time daydreaming about the new friends she would meet when she went to school that she did not hear her Ina creep into the room. I thought you were asleep. I'm going to lay your little brother down for a nap while I clean up the kitchen. 
Just make sure he goes to sleep. Do not play with him and keep him awake. Ina had caught her too many times playing with her little brother instead of helping him to sleep. Okay, she sighed. Before Ina left, Seepsi asked her mother, When will Ate be home? Ina just looked at her and shrugged her shoulders. She left and closed the door behind her. Abu Misu Abu Psi quietly sang her baby brother a lullaby over and over to help him go to sleep. She stretched out on the bed. <clears throat> she groaned. Her legs were so achy and sore. She thought about why she got achy legs. Ina had told her that it was because it was her body's way of telling her when a storm was coming. Ate told her because she was always jumping around that they got sore sometimes. Then he told her about her Dakota name, Psi Chadawi Chiana. Psi Chada means little jumper or grasshopper. She did like to jump. She jumped across rocks down at Firefly Creek. In winter, she liked to jump in snowbanks. In fall, she liked to jump in piles of leaves. In spring and summer, she liked to jump in mud puddles. And she liked to jump from trees all the time. She was thinking about all the places she liked jumping when she heard the door creak open. <gasps> uh oh, she squeezed her eyes shut tight thinking, Ina is gonna catch me awake. She thinks I need to rest my eyes to make my legs feel better. She waited, <sighs> she held her breath, when she heard the door squeaking shut, she peeked through the slits of her eyes. It was Ate! Shh! He came quietly in the room. Seep Seep almost forgot that Misu was sleeping in the corner crib. He made a little baby noise but did not wake up. Ate slid next to her. She wrapped her arms around his rough neck. He smelled of thunder and rain. She whispered in his ear, Is it already nighttime, Ate? No, I am home early because a big storm is coming. But me chunkshi, what are you doing in bed? Oh, Ate, my legs ache again. Ate, tell me a story. He began. Me chunkshi, I wonder what old Ukdomi is up to today. He is up to no good, she replied. Ate began to rub her achy legs with his strong, rough hands. They were warm and made her feel better, even with the calluses and scars from his hard work. Oh, Ukdomi, he has been trying to find something, he whispered. What is he looking for, she whispered back. Ate tapped his hand in a beat on his worn out blue jeans. He began to hum and tap a familiar Wichipi song, a song that told a story. Ukdomi is searching. He can hear something. A song is getting a little louder. Ukdomi is getting closer. He can see something on top of the next hill. Then Ukdomi sees a Tatanka skull. He sees the flies dancing inside the skull. Ate sang some more of the song, this time a little louder. He can see flies, many flies. They are all buzzing to the song and fly dancing to its beat. Ukdomi interrupts. Hey, flies, I want to dance too. Oh, Ukdomi, you cannot come in here and dance, the flies tell him. But Ukdomi is pushy and picks up the skull. I want to come in. Ukdomi, you are too big. You are a man and you cannot fit inside here, the flies reply. Oh, yes, I can, Ukdomi says. He pushes the Tatanka skull onto his head. See, yes, I can fit, muffles Ukdomi. All the flies escaped. Ukdomi is left to sing to himself. Ukdomi stops singing and sighs. <sighs> I am bored. Now there is no one to sing and dance with.
All the flies had flown away. They are looking for another small space to hold Wachipi. Ukdomi is done with singing. He stands up and tries to pull off the Tatanka skull. It is stuck! He starts pulling and pushing with all his might. Still, it does not come off. He tries to pull off the skull. He tries again and again. Then he bumps into something. Hey, what are you? Well, I am Utuhu Cha. I am the strongest tree there is. Can you help me get this off my head? Then I can see just how strong you are, says Uktomi. No, I am sorry. I cannot do that, says Utuhu Cha. Over the hills he goes on. Ukdomi bumps into another. What are you? I am Wachpopa. You can swing from my branches if you like. Well, I would like to try that if you could just help me get this skull off my head, said Ukdomi with excitement. Sorry, I'm not able to help you do that. Ukdomi walks on and he bumps into another. Now what are you? he asks. I am Chahasa. You can come back in the spring and tap me for sap. I would do that if you could just help me lift this skull off my head, answers Ukdomi. Well, I am sorry, I cannot do that. Ukdomi begins to drag his feet as he is walking away. He hangs his head in loss. Jahasa yells back at him. I will see you next spring. Ukdomi, now so tired, walks for a very long time. He then bumps into yet another tree. This time, he does not bother to lift his head. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm sure you cannot help me, he softly says. Well, I am Khante Shada. You had better step back. I grow on cliffs, and it is dangerous. You should not come any closer. Ukdomi becomes curious. He lifts his head. Hmm. Khante Shada, you say? Ukdomi turns toward Khante Shada. He is thinking and thinking. Maybe if I climb up, I could look through one of these eye holes and see where I am at, he says. No, no, Ukdomi. That would be a mistake. Listen to me. It is dangerous way up here. Ukdomi begins to climb Khante Shada. Sometimes his foot slips. Sometimes the brittle branches break off, but he keeps climbing, trying to reach the top. Yes, yes, I will make it to the top. I will be able to see far away. Then I will be able to figure out just where I am at, Ukdomi tells himself. Ukdomi just about reaches the top. He grabs one of the newer branches. It is too thin for his weight to hold. The branch snaps off. Ukdomi begins falling. Oh no, he yells, falling to the ground. Thump! He lands on his head. The Tatanka skull cracks open. Ah, much better, he says to himself. He shakes his head as if to clear flies from his ears. Ukdomi gets back up and continues his walk to nowhere. Okay, Michumshi, wanadi shtima. Another day we'll find out where Ukdomi wanders to next, Ate says. He tucks Psipsi Chira Wichina into bed. Dayanishtima, he says as he shuts off the light. The rain pattering against the window makes the air feel less heavy. Psipsi's legs feel better. She yawns and snuggles down deeper into the covers and says just as she's falling asleep, Ukdomi, you should have listened. Ina, mother, Ate, father, Psi, Psi, Chada, Wichiana, 
Grasshopper Girl, Michunkshi, My Daughter, Misung, My Little Brother, Uktomi, Spider. In Dakota folklore, Uktomi is considered a trickster. Some communities refer to him as a man and others as a spider man. He has the ability to change shape. He is often mischievous, sometimes clever, however, always teaching and reminding us how to behave. Abu, a common lullaby in Dakota families that lulls children to sleep. Wana, now. Daya Nishtima, sleep well. Wachipi, a dance or powwow. Tatanka, buffalo. Utuhu Cha, oak tree. Wachbopa, willow tree. Chahasa, maple tree. Khante Shada, red cedar tree. Uktomi stories have been shared in Dakota families and communities for a very long time. This tradition continued into the childhood of my mother's generation. Depending upon location and community, variations of this Uktomi story have been told. This Uktomi story is a local version my mother and her siblings heard from their father, primarily when they were ill, perhaps to lend comfort in addition to impart lessons to a captive audience. Depending upon band and community, dialect differences occur within the Dakota language. Traditionally, the Dakota language was an oral language, only spoken and not written. In the 1800s, missionaries established a Dakota orthography while producing a written Bible and other texts. Since then, written Dakota language resources and many language activists have served to revitalize the endangered language.